Today I look at iKVM version 3.46. So if you have iPMI version 3.46 or later uh, with your ZND system, you will have this ability to do HTML5 remote control. So let me just give you an actual demo of that. So we go to the remote control button, iKVM HTML5 shows up because I have firmware 3.46. All right, now it has some limitations and this video is about helping you get around those current limitations where they haven't quite added the ability to mount ISOs from right within this user interface. With the Java interface, yes, you can, but this video is about trying to avoid Java. So all these menus, nothing talks about mounting ISO, the good and easy way where you plug it in and plug it out. So I'm gonna go and show you a different way. Let me just minimize that because we're gonna use that again later. Head over to virtual media, CD-ROM image, and network sharing. That's basically what we're gonna do. But I'm gonna take a moment to show you the simplest way for network sharing to be least likely to trip you up so you don't spend your time troubleshooting network sharing issues. So now a distant, a different machine, this is Windows 10, but a different machine here is in front of me. That's what I'm recording video on. And I've brought up its C drive. And there's a reason I'm doing that because from the root of that C drive, I'm gonna hit the new button and say new folder. All lowercase, I've created a folder called ISOs. Okay, inside that ISOs folder, I'm gonna put the stuff that I want to share. So in this case, it's the two copies, sorry, it's the copies of what you need for ESXi 6.5. Now, in my case, I just wanna mount this hypervisor file, the installer. All right, so we've got ourselves a folder that's now useful. Let's go back up a level and right click on that folder we just created. Go to properties, sharing, click on the share button. We're not gonna do advanced, trying to keep it simple. And it shows my user account. Well, I know my user account. So at this point I can just click share and it should create a simple, nice, short URL. And that is win 10 multiboot forward slash ISOs. All right, here we go. That can be upper or lower, Windows ignores the case. I've got the complete path and name of the file that I want. Username. All right, so here we go, save. And it did not complain. So notice, uh, I guess I got the syntax right, right? Fine. Now what happens when I click mount? Please check the device status to confirm. Okay. There is an ISO file mounted. It's that simple. You could do it from the local machine too. It doesn't really matter. You just need to have the name here. Um, or IP address might be easier over a wire if you have some DNS problems. Now, that's a first step. How do you know it really worked? Well, let's go back to HTML5 like I promised. And now I can power the machine on. And I'm going to get ready to hit the was F11, choose alternate boot device, right? So again, we've got this going. Um, I can do full screen mode to make the video a little kind of simpler. When the beep happens, the screen should be saying, hit such and such key to get into alternate boot sequence. And that's what's happening now. I hit F11. Invoking boot menu is shown at the bottom. You heard me going a little nuts on the keyboard. Sorry about that. One push should have done fine. <laughs> All right. So now I actually have UEFI turned on in my bias. So it'll look like this, UEFI A10 virtual CD-ROM. So it's emulating over the network, a CD-ROM device, and it's loading and it's working. And now we see some ethernet traffic being sent at a well, fairly modest rate. So it's not gonna be the speediest install necessarily, but it really won't matter for something small like this. So uh, it worked. We have loaded an ISO over the network. There is no ESXi installed in this new machine. And that's what I'm about to do is take it from here and install ESXi 6.5 on this remote server. So when that installation is done, 
naturally, I'd want to click on mount. So that's it for this video. I've shown you what I wanted to show you. Hopefully you found it helpful. Thank you for watching and for visiting tinkertry.com.